Hey guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Star Tycoon Build Your Own Galactic Corporation by Warp Core Games. This is a 1-6 to six player game that takes roughly 20 minutes per player and is for ages 13 and up. And in the game Star Tycoon, you are going to be playing as a corporation that has a home planet that is attempting to gather more planets and build industrial facilities onto those planets. You'll go through six rounds of gameplay, collecting as many planets and industrial locations as you possibly can, gathering resources, trading with other players, and utilizing this market board to get even more resources or sell for a higher value. At the end of the game, whoever has the most victory points based on completing objectives at the bottom of their planets and main home world slash their uh, unique corporation requirements will be the winner of the game. Don't forget about the bonuses that you can get as well, and that's basically the idea of how you deal with Star Tycoon. Will you be the Galactic Federation owner? find out in the game. The setup for Star Tycoon is fairly simple. The first thing you do is you'll take the Galactic Exchange Board and place it within reach of all players. Take these yellow tokens and place them in the middle, the one-to-one -one space. Uh, each of them are going to go into their each unique five spots. Then go ahead and take the turn order marker and place it on the start location in the bottom left-hand side of the board. On the bottom right hand side you will select a random uh, requirement or uh, ability or objective I should say and place it down and this will be your specific objective at the end of this game to score additional bonus points. Then you'll go ahead and take all of these here, these are six different developments or uh, specific types of developments and place them down within reach of all players. Over here on the uh, left hand side of the board you're going to get um, uh, unique planets you're going to get the building faction facilities one, two, and three. Shuffle each deck individually and then deal out three cards and place them adjacent to the space. Each player is going to get a turn order token, the little guy on it, a starting planet with a little home on it, and one of these. These are going to be your corporations. They will give you a set of starting resources on the top right hand side of the card. Take those starting resources and place it into your player pool. In this case, I have two ships, two wheat, and a rock. Give one player the starting location, the starting uh, player marker, and then go ahead and set the bank loan cards within reach of all players and these specific action cards that take place every round and place that within reach as well. The final thing you do is take all the resources and place them in each of the little bins and whenever somebody needs them, they should be able to reach them as well. That's pretty much the setup. The gameplay is quite simple as well. Starting with the first player marker, that player is going to follow this turn order track here. The first thing that happens every single turn is you will replenish the cards and exchange markers and then produce resources. Uh, by that I mean placing out any new cards from the planets or the building spaces that had been removed. And any of these exchange markers that have been placed onto the X side will be flipped over and be placed back onto their arrow side. Then you're going to go ahead and gather resources. Basically every single one of your planets is going to hopefully uh, provide a unique benefit or a unique amount of resources that you gain. It's going to be based on this little building here. It's a little blue factory building. As well as any of your industrial locations, those would also provide you with resources. Just check to see the blue area followed by a little factory symbol and gather each resource from all of those cards. Once you've gathered those uh, resources, you will place them adjacent to you. Then you're going to go ahead and take as many of these actions as you'd like with some limitations. The first action is you can purchase or reserve one per row and partnerships cannot be reserved. These are partnerships here. So you can go ahead and select to uh, purchase any one of these three in each of these rows here. So if I wanted this guy here, I'd pay the cost in the upper left and I could put it out. I can only have one planet though on a turn, I can't get two. And the same can be said for your industrial one, two, and three locations. And the cost for all these is in the top left hand corner. Additionally, they're going to give you a uh, bonus in a production or they're going to give you a way to either make a trade once per turn or uh, give you bonus points when you're able to secure industrials on a specific planet. So this planet requires a heart, a yellow, and I guess like this blue screw, a different industrials underneath it. And if so, you'll score four points at the end of the game. Uh, and you'll be buying these guys here with the resources that you have. Additionally, you can exchange up to once per turn per, per resource. So uh, you'll see on this exchange board here, the different types of resources. And there are five main ones in the game with a unique one uh, that's gonna be this little skull marker here, which we'll talk about later in my review. Basically, for each of the resources, you can either choose to go back on the track or forward on the track. 
if I want to, I can exchange one resource for one coin, and then I'll move this back down, and the next time somebody wants to utilize this, it's going to cost them two resources for one coin. Uh, the other option is I could move it forward. I could spend one coin um, for one resource, and then the next time somebody wants to utilize the board here, it's going to cost them two coins for one resource, or of course it can go back the other way. Just so long as you note that you can only go left or right once per resource for each of the resources here, and they'll differ from left to right based on how people choose to sell and buy resources. Um, additionally, you can go ahead and refresh. You can spend one currency or one coin uh, per row, and it can be repeatable. So for each of these rows here, the industrial tracks one, two, and three in the planets, I could spend a coin if I had one, remove the cards that are there, and then replace them with three new cards. This will allow me more options when I choose to buy planets and industrial locations. But remember, you cannot refresh if you have already bought a card from that row. And the last thing you can do is barter with other players. You're allowed to exchange any number of resources or coins or skull tokens for any number of resources that they have. Think of this like Catan. If you have a valuable resource, like maybe for instance, uh, I've got a blue one and the blue one is very, very expensive now and people can't afford it or don't have it, you can actually start trading players. I'll give you one blue for three, etc., etc., etc. And you can use the trade function as much as you want throughout the game. Uh, after you've chosen to do the actions, whether it be to purchase or reserve cards from each of these rows here, exchange up to one resource on the track per resource uh, left or right by buying or selling them, refreshing these rows, or barding with other players, then you're going to simply end the turn. You'll discard down to seven resources of any type and coins. Um, and, can, and, and of course, the interesting thing about these skull tokens is they cannot be discarded. So if you ever get skull tokens, you have to hold on to them. They're very useful and they can make things cheaper, but they also can be a detriment and be difficult to get rid of in a pinch. And of course, whenever you discard resources, that will move this track down, making those resources less valuable. So make sure you're careful as to what resources you get rid of. Another side note too on your turn is you can purchase these guys here and they're all going to have a cost of these purple uh, resources, these like little beakers here. But when you buy them, any green developments that you can find in each of the rows are free. You still have to follow the main rules, meaning you can only purchase one for each of the different rows. And if somebody ever buys one of these specific types of, uh, of industrial locations, you're going to get one gold from the bank whenever they do. So you can have as many of these as you want, as long as you can afford them. And they'll provide you with bonuses, but they will not give you victory points. Once you went through the full turn order, you're going to pass the turn. The next player is going to go, and so on and so forth, until all players have taken their turn. Once that happens, the round marker is going to move. And if this round marker hits one of these exclamation points, you'll be able to draw one of these guys and read them out. These are events that change the game in unique ways each and every round. Once you've read it, go ahead and place it on the bottom of the deck and just continue rinsing and repeating through each of the rounds until you hit the last round. Once you get to the end of the round, that's going to symbol the, signal the end of the game, and you'll calculate each of the valuable resources here at the bottom uh, that you need to acquire on each of either on your main corporation or on your planets. Uh, you can score additional points. You'll check to see if you've met those conditions or just straight up gotten those points from unique industrial locations like this guy here. Add them all up, and whoever has the most points is the winner, along with any bonuses like these, like the system he won here. The last thing to note is the bank loans. At any time, you can take these bank loans and you'll have to, you can gain five coins from the bank, but you're going to need to repay the loan in full. And until you do every round, you're going to be losing one coin in interest. So make sure that you're able to pay for them. Additionally, at the end of the game, if you still have a bank loan, uh, you're going to lose five victory points, which is massive. Each of your main corporations is going to have a special once per turn ability that you can utilize and they all function very differently, but basically that's how you play the game Star Tycoon. Well, what do I think about it? Star Tycoon is a stock based game. Basically, you're going to be increasing and decreasing the price of valuable resources that you can use to trade and, of course, to buy additional planets and or industrial locations. There's unique forms of resources, like you're going to have this little guy here, the skull, which will give you valuable locations at the cost of having to keep them in your inventory until you can utilize them. Your corporation is going to have a unique ability, which provides you with some unique benefits throughout the game and can help you out when dealing with your opponents, or instead of that, they can utilize your opponent's things. Like for instance, my guy, I was able to actually use a trade from one of my opponents each turn. 
you're going to start with a home planet, and that home planet is going to give you valuable resources every turn. This is going to be your lifeblood. Gaining resources in this game is very, very important, but it's not going to score you points at the end of the game. That is by gathering the correct planets, uh, then uh, solidifying or securing what they require. There's specific symbols that you'll need. So if, for instance, I don't know, I have a planet that required a heart on it, I could take this industrial location and put it under it. Each of the planets has a unique number of uh, specific locations that can go under it and a requirement of the types that are going to go under it and points if you're able to achieve that accomplishment. Even if you can't fulfill it, you can still place those locations underneath. It will give you the benefits of those locations underneath the planet, whether it be to reproduce or to utilize some type of trade, etc, etc. And each turn, you're only going to be able to get one planet at the most, and then one of each of these different locations, as well as, of course, one of these guys here. This kind of counts as its own separate row, but it does not refill. Every round these guys refill, but you can always refresh them if you want, making the game a little easier to determine what you need and how you can gather and how you can spend. Some players start with coin currency and others don't. And that is where the exchange comes in. Being able to trade resources for coins or trade coins for resources is going to be very valuable. But because you can only have one of each type, whenever you utilize this board on your turn, you're simply going to have to move these markers and then you're going to have to flip them over to remember to remind yourself that you can no longer use that specific location on the board. And that way, on the next turn, your opponent is going to be able to access this board. So if this is how it went, I went ahead and, uh, and I uh, sold three resources and I bought two of them and my turn was over, these things would flip over. And now my next, the next player is going to be able to utilize these boards at either a uh, increase or decrease in cost based on the previous players, changing the board and varying it up each and every round because this never goes back to the center once it starts. It's just going to keep moving back and forth. Sometimes you might get a really good deal by trading one coin in for four resources or trading one resource in for four coins. But there's also the opposite side, right? Where you have to spend three coins or four coins for a specific resource. And certain resources are going to be more valuable in the game than others, depending on what is needed and what is available and who can produce what when it comes to trading. It has that feel of Catan in that way, where it's like, I need wheat. Only Bill can make wheat. No one else has wheat. I cannot produce wheat. And wheat is too expensive on the exchange. So I'm going to have to barter with Bill. Hopefully, that's more it's cheaper than a four to one. But even still, a three or a two to one is quite expensive. And Bill might get ahead if I give him too many resources. Another cool thing about this game is these event cards here. It could be an opportunity or a market flip or some debt forgiveness or a building room or a war or peace or research grant, etc, etc. So everybody, everybody can take a beaker from the bank at one round or each player draws a card in turn from the planet deck and claims it for free on one round. Each player receives a skull token, which is good and bad. And then you have a 30 day free trial where players, players can trade resources with resources from the bank and move the exchange marker down one space from the resource that you trade. So this kind of gives a nice little mix up in the game. Uh, these cards here are all really cool, like rounded bioworks. Being able to acquire this while not giving you victory points will let you buy whatever cards you want each round once per row. Um, for free. You're basically going to get these cards and place them underneath. You are limited by the spaces underneath your planets, so you always want to make sure you have enough planets in the game, but also gaining free resources whenever players take planets that you could technically get for free is also very, very valuable. So utilizing these beakers is going to be great. I love the variety in this game. There's a lot of choice, but it's all quite simple. You have the knowledge of each of the things that you can do. There's a certain amount of times you can utilize them, but there's always going to be things and ways that you can secure getting resources that you need. At one point you might think, I can't get this resource, but then you find a way based on maybe occupying or utilizing a specific uh, trade you have, or your character ability lets you trade with somebody else, or steal a resource, or you find a planet that has a steal and you can purchase that one and then get the resource that you need from taking from the bank or a player and, and maybe the event pops up and it changes the way the game works and allows you to secure that extra victory and each of those moments in this game makes it a lot of fun. This is kind of like one of those light stock type games where you're trying to increase and decrease the values of resources. If it's a resource you have an abundance of you want to make sure that that is going to be expensive and if, a if it's a resource that you have very little of you want to make sure that you're able to purchase it and thus you have to be kind of careful about how you utilize this track here. Uh, each of the resources have their own uh, unique aspects to them as well, which is kind of cool. Like beakers are mainly going to be used to purchase these big boys here. Your planets, or sorry, your, your uh, <laughs> these little ships here can purchase planets. And if you run out of these guys, you're going to be in trouble as well. And then sometimes you might want to purchase something that has skulls on it. 
But if you're not careful and you get too many of these things and you're producing too many of them, you start getting locked up or bogged out and you're not able to get rid of them and it can mess you up. So you have to be very careful. And then of course the rest of them is for different types of facilities that you're going to be attaching to your planets, scoring victory points, uh, obtaining trade value, etc, etc. So, the uh, artwork for the game. Artwork is solid. Star Tycoon has a really cool little stylistic artwork. Um, you've got two different types of alien corporations. It feels very corporate. It feels very sci-fi and alien-esque. And I like that. That's a nice little twist to it. Each of the different facilities looks really cool. I like the stylistic ver variants of each of the different buildings and their art and how they kind of all attach together. And they have this really cool, like, sketched out style look. I just, I, I really, really dig this. It kind of reminds me of a few of the new animations I see on Netflix. Um, I also like the quality of the game. This quality is excellent. Uh, how everything is placed out and feels kind of at ease on the board and you know where everything is going to go and um, the different moving pieces feel good. It feels good to move this market track and flip these over and try and mess with your opponents and score for yourself. The fact that you know what you have in front of you and what is available to you and uh, all that is just kind of a nice attachment to a high quality, well produced game. And Star Tycoon is definitely one of those things. I have played this quite a few times and enjoyed it each and every time. And everyone around the table also enjoyed it quite profusely. If you would like to take a look, there's a link down below in the description. I highly, highly recommend Star Tycoon for those of you who enjoy tableau building and stock market games in like a lightish, like medium light type of a strategy. I really personally had a lot of fun with this one. I'm gonna keep this one. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Star Tycoon. Like I said, there's a link down below in the description. I try to think of like some negatives for the game, but realistically, most of it is just rules changes, things that they need to make more consistent, like more make it easier to understand when just comes to the rules, but playing the game is simple and intuitive. That I just wasn't going to fault the game for that, especially because I know that it's going to be fixed in in post, like fixed throughout the campaign as these things come up. Just like understanding that you can do one of these guys each turn, etc., etc. The game might feel a little longer at first, but just because it's your first play and afterwards, it was quite easy and it felt smooth, so I wasn't going to fault that either. But anyway, I just want to clear out why I didn't have anything to say about it, because I just really, really enjoyed it. It was straight down the line good. Um, you can also check out our YouTube channel here if you are on this channel right now watching you can go ahead and subscribe if we've earned your subscription hit the bell notification as well if this is your second or third video that you've seen of us maybe it is worth subscribing I hopefully I've earned that from you and if so I greatly do appreciate it all right guys that's pretty much all I got you can check out our live streams on Sunday and of course Wednesday on whatnot and Facebook YouTube and Twitch thank you so much and as always I look forward to developing the galaxy with you next time.